Uh, I've never seen this cafeteria this crowded, so a uh, round of applause to Andy. Woo! <laughs>
it's just they haven't had the time to think about post-acquisition, what does it look like to engage users? And what does it look like to create really beautiful, delightful engagement experiences? So, aka building better experiences than what we have today. The second thing that I learned is that we are responsible for dreaming big, but also making an impact. So the reason why I say this is, um, it's very easy, I think, for us to take mandates from executive leadership to say, okay, let's go after this thing. And the thing happens to be email. But in fact, when you apply the open rates, the click through rates, um, the click through rates on the landing page, you quickly realize that you're not going to be able to make that business impact that everyone is championing you to do. And also, like growth showing internally that this growth team is going to be able to make an impact on. So we have to create both macro and micro experiments. So it's not to say abandon email, it's to say we need to create more holistic experiences that encompass a multi-stage, multi-channel onboarding flow. The other thing I learned was uh, the tools we have are like cheap Lego blocks at times. So we're trying to stack them on top of each other, trying to use email, do in-product notifications, and also try to figure out how to uh, make sure that when someone goes to the purchase flow that we actually send them the right reminders before they even get to launching the product. And when we, they launch the product, we need to make sure that they get the right uh, push marks to be successful on the product. Um, but I don't know if anyone else can relate but we don't have like one universal system to do all of these things. We use the different campaign, we have some uh, applications like what is now known as Braze. I had to stop because I was thinking about it when they were out of point. Um, and just a whole bunch of systems, and then on top of that, all the tracking systems that have to go into that. So the tech stack sucks. And then the other thing I learned. Um, and I think everyone would agree with this on the growth team, is we have a lot of discussions about what is a growth team? Is the growth team designed to actually design experiments and do better onboarding? Or is the growth team supposed to be faster marketing optimizers? And what happened was, when we started out the group, we ended up um, being the marketing optimizers. And we, we were saying that we could do um, emails from scratch within seven days. And then that set the expectation that we would do emails in perpetuity. And so what I realized is that we need to put the oxygen mask on ourselves first because we, as a business team, are still cold with APIs and also simultaneously building beautiful experiences. Um, and so those are some of the learnings high level. We'll go, I'll go much deeper into a lot of these portions, but it wasn't an overnight project. So like I said, I was the first uh, growth hire within Creative Cloud. And it was just me, September 2017. And so my task was to create experiments by myself and then show business impact. Specifically, uh, show that we can demonstrate that we can retain users on a subscription level uh, after the 13 months that they've been paying with us. And so, I did that, tried to come up with some uh, ideas, tried to pitch them. I had these really tacky gray boxes from XT and from Sketch at the time. And then I realized that the thing that I was missing was to visualize that story. And I suck at it. Like I can't, I can't do a workflow, I can't create like a multi-stage email kind of prototype. And so um, Christine was here. <laughs> Happened to be contracted for another team at the time, and so the team wasn't uh, at full capacity. So I asked her to come join the effort. So in December, she came here. We actually sat at that table over there, the, the bench, uh, the cafe. And what we did was we just brainstormed on students. We were like, okay, what can we do? Where can we start? What is the low hanging fruit? And we started doing that. Um, I think for a couple weeks in a row. And so we, we designed um, one experiment that we, did, uh, that we launched, and that was slightly directional positive. So Christine was moonlighting as a developer. I was moonlighting as like an analyst slash marketer slash whatever at the time, and it was just the two of us. And so we saw directional positive 
uh, lips on launch rates, which was then our cue to uh, formalize, formalize a team. So then enter in Joshua Milner, who was here earlier, I think, but uh, a marketer, a data scientist, or a data analytics partner, a designer, and a growth team. And that's what, at the time, we thought was the right makeup for a lean enough team to run experiments, but then to also be able to uh, to also be able to uh, be self-contained. So at the time, because Christine could code, we were like, we're gonna code some things, and we're gonna try our best to roll up our sleeves. And in the spirit of being growth-minded, we're gonna do whatever it takes to make the numbers and to create the, those beautiful experiences that we promised everyone. So then, uh, the thing that I realized we were doing is we actually were coming up with ideas from our intuition. And to me, that was insufficient, even though we were seeing some kind of positive, positive directional lift. And so, one of the things we were wondering is, should we layer on user research? And at the time, we didn't have Victoria, which uh, she now partners with our team, to, uh, to run research and user interviews. But at the time, we were wondering how we could do it most correctly. So one of the concepts that came out of working with Christine was, why don't we just go talk to our users? And someone from Intuit came to speak at a, an all-hands for us in Creative Cloud. And one of the things he was telling us was that he would, <laughs> it sounds a little weird, but he would wait in the parking lot <laughs> for some, with some of the uh, people that he identified as users of QuickBooks, like, I think. And so he would ask if he could follow them home and watch them use their products. <laughs> and so we didn't do that and follow anyone home, we didn't sit in the parking lot. What we did though was I taught myself to query a couple things and extracted users uh, from the database. But I did this at, when I was at Airbnb to, to prioritize. And so what we would do is we would pull out uh, the highest concentration of users across different markets uh, internationally. That was my way of saying, we're not localizing in Hebrew because there are only five users there in our database. What we did was we took the inverse of that and we took, we, wa we wanted to see where the most concentration of users were in underrepresented markets. Because my assumption was if users were uh, savvy enough in high tech metropolitan cities, what was the other type of user who uh, was in, say, like in Atlanta, Georgia, or in Miami, Florida? And the fact what we see is we actually have populations in over 300,000 in those markets. So there's something there. Um, and so what we did was we went into those people's homes who replied and said that they would be interested in doing user interviews. We sat there, and Christine and I, and Joshua and I, and everyone in the growth team watched people download the products. And there was this one moment, I'll never forget it, we were Assuming that people, when they launch the products, they know how to import their first photo. So again, the team was based on the Creative Cloud products, and specifically we focused on Lightroom, which is the photo editing product. So we were watching uh, this, this woman launch her desktop uh, app. And so the first thing in the desktop app is uh, a cue to get started, import your first photo. We also had her go into the web browser version of our product and do that. And in the web browser, there's a coach mark in blue that says, start here, import your first photo. It's a small coach mark, it's on the left-hand side. Uh, she was fumbling around, she clicked on this other button, everything else was gray, by the way. So it's a black screen, blue coach mark, everything else was gray. She kept clicking on all the gray things. And I'm like, hello, the thing is blue right there, click on the left. <laughs> and then, so she, she got frustrated, she like threw up her hands and she said, I don't know how to get started. And in that moment, I had this light bulb mo uh, moment for myself because I thought, well, maybe we assume that everyone is tech savvy enough and that they'll read all the things on the screen. But in fact, we have to be almost in their fix, be prescriptive and to guide them, and that's okay. In fact, people are looking for that, but it needs to be specific and it needs to be concise. So we did that and we had great success. So what we decided to do was we were going to do that prescriptive onboarding experience across all the services that we have. And when we say services, it's our way of saying marketing, essentially marketing product channels. So we did that, 
and the clicker is not participating with me. And so um, we did that across all the products. We started with email, just like everyone asked us to, and then we went deeper into the product. So the second visual that you see there is how to be prescriptive in the App Store version of Creative Cloud. Then it was in the web browser portion, and then recently in in app in the mobile app. And so all these things designed by Christine. And I think that the one thing to for me as as something to take away from this experience is people really respond well to prescriptive guidance done in a really beautiful, like delightful way. And so a lot of the images that you see, a lot of the assets that we source are either from the community, from our own PM, from uh, photography, from some of our pro photographers. And so we were able to show success. And then people wanted more. OK, you did that in Lightroom. What about Photoshop? And so same thing. We had very limited resources. Christine and I tried to span both projects. And then we had an operations manager who was supporting us um, on the side. And the, the realization that we had was that we couldn't do this with the limited number of people that we have. And in fact, Brooke Dunn at a Facebook or an Airbnb or Pinterest had teams in like north of 50 people per one product. And what we underestimate in this complex, complicated ecosystem at Adobe is one product is not Adobe, it's not an Adobe product, it's multiple Adobe products, and so we have to staff it accordingly. And so we made the case to build a kick ass team, and that is what I have the privilege of leading now. And so we staffed it with the right growth PMs, the right lifecycle marketers, the right designers, marketing insights, and then we have true growth operations uh, and strategy support. And so that's where we are today. And when we built that, one of my favorite things from um, Airbnb that I wanted to translate into Adobe was um, when they 10 x their employees, they also kept the culture, which I thought was incredible. To go from 600 people to 4,000 people, to still say things like, you should be a host, and to escort people in and ask them if they want water. It was just such a wonderful place to be. So I said, I have never really heard us say out loud what the values are at Adobe. So let's create these values as a team. And so that's what we did. The first one is to be bold. We should, instead of just thinking about subject line optimizations, instead of thinking about uh, swapping in assets, we should think about bigger experience-driven experiments. And so that's what Christine is so, she's so poor to our team for that reason. I'm going to skip through this actually. And so if you have questions, if you are short on time, you can just pull me aside after. The second is to be direct. Be simple in an overly complex, overly complicated ecosystem. Be humble. This goes without saying. And the last one I'll leave you with is I think everyone in this room is here for the right reasons, and you should be a hustler. And in fact, the shortest way I can say this is you should do wake up every day and do things that you feel like Beyonce would be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh,